Welcome to video 1.3, Absolute Value. Uh, remember that these are your Cornell notes. So on your paper, go ahead and divide into your quadrants. Um, write down the title. A lot of times uh, in our textbook, it's actually 1-3 like that, not a period. So I'm going to see if I can magically get rid of that dot right there. Yeah, I did it. And then, of course, today's date, whatever day it is that you're taking these notes on, go ahead and write that here for date. And then throughout the lesson, if you have any questions, you need to write them here. Something that you want to ask me, something that you don't understand. As with the last video, you're going to be inserting questions or typing out questions in the video. That Those questions will go here as well. So you're giving them to me through the video, but then you're also going to be writing them down here. So as you're watching the video, if you think of a question, write it down so that you can type it in when you're prompted to do so. Our guiding question, our CPQ, our comprehensive purposeful question is, how do you find the absolute value of a number? All right, I'm just going to tell you very simply and quickly, the absolute value of a number is how many units away from zero that number is. When we're talking about a distance, you don't have a negative distance. It is always positive, and that's what absolute value is. It is a distance. The absolute value of a number is the number's distance from zero on a number line. So, and, and the symbol are these two sticks right here um, that are surrounding that number. So if I want to say the absolute value of 12, I would write the two sticks, and inside the sticks I would put 12. If I'm asking for the absolute value of negative 20, okay, there's negative 20, putting these sticks on the outside makes it absolute value. So how far from 12, or how far from 0, is 12? It's 12 units away from 0, and that's what your answer is. That's the absolute value. So you'd say the absolute value of 12 is 12. What about negative 20? How many units away from 0 is negative 20? Well, it is 20 units from 0. So the absolute value is 20. Your answer is 20. That's it. Notice this is positive and this is positive because the distances are always positive. Okay? So let's go down here. Um, what I want you to do in your notes is write down these questions, A, B, C, D, E, F. Write these questions down. So you'll write A and then the absolute value of negative 7, B, absolute value of 5, C, absolute value of 7, and then you're going to write the answers to those, so you'll want the equal sign. And what is the absolute value of negative 7? Well, how many units away from 0 is negative 7? It is 7 units from 0, so your answer is 7. Uh, absolute value of 5. How many units away from 0 is the number 5? It's 5 units away from 0, so your answer is 5. Okay, what's the absolute value of 7? It's 7 because it's 7 units away from 0. What is the absolute value of negative 2? Negative 2 is 2 units from 0, so the answer is 2. What's the absolute value of 4? 4. What's the absolute value of negative 4? It is 4 also. If you don't have a question because it seems so easy for you, then I would like for you to go ahead and write a question or type out a question that you already know the answer to. Even if you already know the answer to it, because you already know this stuff maybe, um, you're, you don't have any questions because you completely understand it, then write a question that like maybe a teacher would ask a student. Now here's a really good question. It says negative numbers are less than positive numbers. Okay? True? Yeah. Negative numbers are less than positive numbers because you have zero and then you have your negative numbers over here and your positive numbers over here. 
Does this mean that the absolute value of a negative number must be less than the absolute value of a positive number? Explain. Okay, now pay attention because I might have a um, Ed Puzzle question coming up about this. Let's say you have the absolute value of negative 2 and the absolute value of uh, 10. Okay? What's the absolute value of negative 2? It's 2. And what's the absolute value of 10? It's 10. Okay, 2 is less than or greater than 10? It's less than. So, so far this seems to be okay. Does this mean that the absolute value of a negative number must be less than the absolute value of a positive number? In this case it is. But let's look at another case. How about if you have negative 20, the absolute value of negative 20, and the absolute value of 16? Okay? Negative 20 is less than 16 because it's negative. But what about the absolute values? What is the absolute value of negative 20? It is 20. What's the absolute value of 16? It is 16. Is 20 less than 16? No, it's greater than. So it will not always be uh, less than even though it's a negative, it's the absolute value. In other words, this distance from 0 to negative 20 is bigger than the distance from 0 to 16. In this next example, um, we're just talking about how absolute values are kind of like an everyday thing. Um, it says Jake uses his online music store gift card to buy an album of songs by his favorite band. Find the negative number that represents the change in the balance on Jake's card after his purchase. Explain how absolute value would be used to express that number in this situation. So if he, um, what do you do? He bought something for $10. Okay, so that change in his balance dropped ten dollars. The, the balance dropped ten dollars and the change would be negative ten. But we would also say that it decreased by ten dollars. We wouldn't say it decreased by negative ten. Okay, it just decreased by ten dollars. And so that right there is a positive number but the decreased means that it dropped. So this is a time that we're using absolute value. Okay, explain why the absolute value of a number will never be negative. We would say that it is because distances are always positive. And that's what absolute value is. Absolute value is a distance. Can you read cursive? Distances are always positive. All right, for this question, we have a problem solving question that uh, if you want to pause it right now and see if you can figure it out on your own, um, then go ahead and pause it and if you want to be if you want me to walk you through the clues uh, read it to you then I'll do that too so you can solve it on your own and then watch the video or fast forward the video to see if you got it correct okay so um, A says Maria's credit card balance is less than negative 30 All right, now you have to think the balance is the um, the number so a number less than negative 30 negative 30 are going to be the numbers that actually they seem bigger but remember on the number line as those negatives get bigger the value is actually getting smaller so the balance is less than negative 30 so does she owe more than 30 or less than 30 she owes more $30 okay 
So if we look at all the ones that show more than 30, okay, that's this one right here, Maria, would be this one because it's the only one that is more than $30. Susan's credit card balance is greater than negative 25. Okay, the balance is going to be a bit number that's bigger than negative 25. Does Susan owe more than $25 or less than 25? She owes less than $25. The balance is greater than negative 25. So you're looking for a number that's greater than negative 25. Okay, so which means that she owes actually less than that. So um, less than negative 25 would be the blue phone. So that's going to be Susan because 20 is less than 25. Georgia's credit card balance is $5 less than Susan's balance. Remember that um, it says up here, when someone owes a positive amount of money, this means that they have a negative balance. So it's, it's kind of backwards thinking. So the balance is $5 less. That means you've got to go down $5 on the balance, which means that they owe $5 more. So who owes $5 more than Susan? That's George. Which phone is that? Susan's is 20, so $5 more um, that they owe is the orange one. That's George. Okay? All right, and then the last one, he owes more. Okay, the last one, Antonio Earn owes $15 less than Maria owes. Okay, now here we're getting to the word owes. And that's what you see up here on the phones. You owe, you owe. And Antonio owes 15 less than Maria. This means that his balance is... Um, his balance is greater the number what he has is greater than Maria's because he owes less okay that would be Antonio this is very tricky wording so be careful okay make sure that you have the questions that you came up with in your notes and go ahead and watch this brain break and then type a little note in the box to me after your brain break.